Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, and we pray. And to thou, O Prince, our heavenly host. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless our Lamb of So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm holding the cross in my hand. I'm not going to fight with the demon, don't worry. <laughs> I'm fighting with the jet lag at the moment. So the jet lag is quite affecting me. And uh, as you know from Mass, I was uh, not very well. I lost my voice two days ago. I think it was the part of the attack to stop me speak from this. But anyway, it was a heavy fight, a lot of medicine. So can you understand me? Yes. Yes. Well, this, my accent is not your accent. <laughs> uh, I've been a priest for tw almost 30 years. And uh, 25 years, I think, I spent in England. So far away, 26 even. So far away from my parents, not this 7,000 miles, but two hours of flight. So I've been working there in England, and uh, I will, used to be an exorcist for 10 years. And then I had a break because I was so intensive. I, was, I worked so hard, and the bishop just decided to, to stop me for a while. And uh, I don't miss that ministry at the moment at all. I serve the people, uh, and I try to serve the priests the most. Not the lay people, because there are tons of them. The need is incredible but especially the priests, the priests and the religious. If they come forward, I would try to help the most. I remember when I came to England, it was so funny because my English was very limited, very limited. I, I could understand, you know, school English. So when you learn a, ling a language at school, it's, it's just the basic. And my priest, uh, the pastor, asked me to go to visit a person who was not well. So I went there and a young girl, woman opened the door and I said, can I see Mrs. So-and-so? I'm a Catholic priest. And she said to me, unfortunately, um, she passed away. But I, the only word I could understand was away. I didn't understand past. So <laughs> it was so funny because I said, excuse me, if she, if, when she comes back, could you ask her to give me a call? <laughs> Can you imagine her <laughs> face? She looked at me and said, Father, what are you talking about? She passed away. She's dead. I completely didn't understand. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I said, I'm sorry, I just came from Poland. I, I don't know the language well. I thought that she was away <laughs> and she will be coming back very soon. Well, I was embarrassed many times as a priest because half of my priesthood, I didn't have any idea about this stuff I'm going to talk about. Half of my priesthood, I was embarrassed. At some point, I, I was completely unaware of the, my situation. I was the priest. I was serving. I was doing the funerals. I was uh, preaching. I was celebrating the Mass. But nothing else. I didn't use the gifts, the spiritual gifts. I didn't use the charismas. Nothing because I didn't know about them. I knew about the devil, there's his existence and everything, but it wasn't my subject. Now I'm very embarrassed. I mean, when I talk about it, when I go backwards, I really feel embarrassed that I wasted so many years in my priestly life. Because now, the knowledge and the experience I have, even if I don't do the ministry as such, the knowledge I can share with people, I can, as I said in the homily, I would like to be a witness. This is not just a dry theological talk and I would just pull on, you, on your shoulders, but I would like to witness to you, to use the very 
simple language and to make sure that you, leaving here on, on Sunday, you say, oh my God, I didn't know that. I have to share with other people. I need to open their eyes because this is the, it is an eye-opening experience. So what really kept me to do this ministry, there were three things, my friends. The first was the faith. The second is the fighting spirit. I was a fighter. I'm still a fighter. And as the third one was the joy in the Holy Spirit. So faith, fighting spirit, and the joy in the Holy Spirit. Very, very important. I'm very aware that this topic is a very heavy one. I don't want to focus on the devil. I don't want to focus on hell, all these darker parts. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. This is the part of it. We cannot run away you know, from the problem and say, oh, I cannot see anything. It doesn't exist. Lots of people, a lots of Catholics, a lot of priests don't believe in anything like that. It's the myth, you know, Middle Ages myth. The devil doesn't exist. You don't hear about this in any homilies on Sundays, because what happens, even, even if it's the priest with courage and he does mention about this stuff, he's reported. Someone is right to the bishop and say, oh, Father, Bishop, our priest is scaring our children. He's talking about the devil or hell or something. And that priest is reported, so the priest don't want to do anything. But this reality really does exist and it's, and it's very unpleasant. I've seen it. I watched it. I've been there. And I was right in the middle of the battlefields. So I would like to be here, not as a preacher, but just sharing with you my testimony, my knowledge, my experience, to be like a real witness. Are you okay with that? Yes. Can you understand me clearly? Yes. <coughs> Good. I would like to start with a letter to Ephesians. Draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Pull on an armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of the present darkness with the evil spirits in the heavens. Well, it's not an easy text, but that's Ephesians 6, chapter 10 to 12. That's what St. Paul is writing. My dear friends, the devil is, has a mission. He knows that his time is very limited. What is his mission? Is not just to destroy our earthly life. He succeeds. How many lives I know he already damaged? How many young people? How many youth, teenagers, marriages? But his mission is to destroy our eternity. Not my body, but my eternity with God. He can't stand the fact that he has no a chance to be saved. Can you imagine, if you have not a chance to get somewhere, you do everything that the second person, your friend, your neighbor, will not get the same place. So he cannot be saved. He will, he's not going to be in heaven. So he's doing, he's a loser. So he's doing everything to destroy you as well. That is the very simple job. He's doing now. And you can see, you're, if you're blind, you cannot see. But if you're not spiritually blind, you can really see what's happening now in this world. <coughs> He's the greatest undercover agent of all times. Anyone, anyone is a welcome challenge to him from Adam to Jesus himself. We know the scene from, from the first book, from Exodus, and we know from, uh, from Adam and Eve. And now we know 
was happened to Jesus in the desert. He challenged everyone. No one is free. No one is free to escape. He is strong enough, and he was strong enough, even to defeat one of these Jesus' disciples named Judas. He destroyed even Judas. And however, how many Christians, how many Catholics do, do not, and religious people, lay people, openly deny that the devil and demon exist? How many of them? You've met probably a lot. I've met a lot. I remember last time, about three weeks ago, uh, the priest who came from London, beautiful priest in his 70s, and he said to me, Father, I, was, I preached about the devil, and I mentioned your name. He's a resident priest. He's retired. And after the Mass, my pastor attacked me and said, never ever mention this priest's name, and never ever preached about the devil. And this old priest was in, you know, in tears. I said, Father, don't worry. It's probably that your pastor has a massive big problem. And he said, Father, you're right. How do you know? <laughs> because every single homily he preached about himself. He said, that's exactly. So, Father, never ever stop. Have the courage. Speak about it. Because remember, you are responsible for the souls. Not for the, pari not for the pastor. <laughs> for the souls. But it was horrible to watch the priest who was, you know, especially in his age, to be uh, in tears. So, what is a demon? What are we talking about? Just maybe, maybe you're very well advanced, maybe you attended lots of retreats like this. But just to remind you, a demon is a spiritual being of the angelic nature that has been condemned for eternity due to his rebellion against God. Demons were not created evil. How many times people ask me, Father, why did God create a devil? Devil wasn't created. He was the highest angel. Lucifer was the highest, was the top general, marshal. And because he wanted to be like God, as we know the story, his pride, he wanted to be worshipped, that's what happened. They rebel in heaven. So the demons are angeling, angeling being like angels, the same as demons. Sometimes we can see the demon. As we know from Father Pio or other saints, they could see the demon. Some saints could see the angels as well. But normally we cannot see. They are everywhere. For instance, before you arrived, I exercised the whole sanctuary. A ton of water, salt, oil, and I pray the prayer of exorcism. So make sure that we are sealed in this chapel because, believe me, they are not happy that I'm here with you. The covens around are not happy. The witchcraft, they know that we are here. They know that we are talking about this stuff. So that's why we need to be protected. Not like naive little children, everything is fine, smile, you know, be happy. No, we need to be protected. So, they are demons, they are angeling uh, uh, being. So one of them is calling, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and I, you know what, as a priest on the seminary and as a priest, I didn't care about it. I knew about the angels. I knew about the darker side. I knew about the demons. I had no clue about what it was all about. Majority of priests, the priests I need, at least I've met, they say exactly the same. I was in a big conference years ago in Boston. And then there were about 50 priests, my, my age or younger, and, you know, after the conference, they were not happy. They said, Father, why we are not taught in seminaries? Why? Why I am a priest for, I've been a priest for many years. I'm a pastor. I'm a most senior. And I know nothing about it. 
I feel like a little child. How can I help people? With what? Meetings, talking. I don't know how to use this stuff. So they were not happy. And it was very, very uh, common uh, feeling. Lots of priests say that it's possessions or are very rare cases. Doesn't happen very often. It's not true. And not rare. I used to do every day because I was talking about it. Most of the talks I did were in Polish, so people were all of a sudden getting aware of the situation. They were even going to church, having a big problem, then going to the confessions, one after another, trying to, to find healing services, but the problems were still there. And all of a sudden, they listened to one of my talks, for instance, and I said, wait a minute. This is not the problem. The problem is completely different place. And they were uh, trying to, to find a, the, uh, help. I don't know how the situation, a little bit in America, but in Europe, is, it's, it's terrible. To find a good experienced exorcist, it's almost impossible. Good trained exorcists who understand the battlefield and the enemy, not just doing the the prayers, but to really to be to have a fighter spirit, it's extremely, is extremely rare. So sometimes people say, I said to people, go to your diocese. So they go to the diocese and they ring the curia and say, oh, can I meet an exorcist? And they say, we have no exorcist. It's not true. Every single bishop is the exorcist. He delegates the priest because he's too busy. But especially in England, people are trying to call the, 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 the diocese office and they say, we have no exorcist. What? What? Yes, there's one. Every single bishop in his diocese is the exorcist. But it, I'm just telling you this, uh, really because the situation is catastrophic. The same in France, the same in Germany. In Germany, for years, it's forbidden to perform any exorcisms. There are exorcists underground. But t I'm telling you, what about these hundreds of thousands young people, teenagers, who are possessed? What's happening to them? Who is taking responsibility for their life? But Jesus said, remember, in my name, they will cast out devils. That's what Jesus said. They will cast out devils in my name. That's his priority. I was ordained to celebrate the Mass. I was ordained to say to, to, to over the people, I absolve you from your sins, to be reconciled. But I was ordained as well to fight, to fight with the powers of darkness that do exist, they are real, and are really, really powerful. No more powerful than God, but they are powerful because we are ignorant. We don't, we don't know where the enemy is, so we think there's no enemy. Imagine if I say, ask you to go and have, have a nice vacation in Afghanistan. Beautiful sunshine, beautiful desert, you know, have a nice two weeks of work and go to Afghanistan. You'll be killed probably in a couple of days. But if I say, no, really, you need to be armed, you need to know the enemy, maybe you will survive. But we don't warn people there's the enemy, there's a problem, listen, do something, open your eyes. So I don't know. I do my best to open people's hearts, to talk, to speak. I think it's more important even than doing the job, but to make you aware that is the reality. And that Jesus asked us to go and heal the sick, cast out devils, preach the gospel. That's what he said. So we, we do struggle because we don't understand what this is all about. And we, the church, has been powerfully inf influenced and influ infiltrated by the secular society in which we live. 
2,000 years ago, few Christians questioned whether, whether Satan or demonic realm were real. Now, 90% of Christians say the devil doesn't exist. Because now we understand psychology, psychiatry, we understand uh, all these diseases, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, 2,000 years ago, the Christians were doing the job. They're fighting. Now we gave up. Everything is intellectual. Everything we, c we can explain medically. I've seen the drama of mothers with teenage children who've been stamped by the doctors and say, you've got DGCC, you know, different kind of <laughs> modern uh, f uh, diseases. But that in reality, they don't exist. But I don't know in this country, but in other countries, they psychiatrists cannot officially send a patient to a priest. I think in Poland, it's still possible. If, I'm, if I was a doctor and say, sorry, I don't know, but maybe can you try a priest for prayer? But in Western Europe, you cannot do it. So the drama of these young people who are just being 16, 17, 18, and already, you know, mentally ill or whatever, disturbed. Their life is over. I, I work with some of them, and after a couple of prayers, they came back to normal life. <laughs> but, but so we have to make people really aware of this uh, situation. <coughs> My dear friends, the problem is that um, in major theme, in the New Testament is the clash between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. When you read the Bible, we can see all the time is the, is the war between the light and the darkness, between God and Satan. And we can see this conflict. The entire New Testament shows that Jesus was not primary, primarily a teacher, but he's... The, the chief title of Jesus was what? Savior. He wasn't a teacher. There were so many teachers. He was a savior or redeemer. That was his chief title. So, he rescues us from the real danger, from something evil. The ministry of Jesus was essentially one of the reconciliation, healing, and salvation of souls. Remember this? And the St. Paul said these words, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rules, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Ephesians 6, 12. So this is a very, very strong text. And St. Paul is telling us that, you know, straight away, what we should do, our struggle is not against flesh or because I have a sexual problem or with myself or whatever. We struggle with the, the real enemy. But who talks about it? If I have a problem, they send me straight away to see a psychologist, take some tablets because I have a depression. Or why have you got a depression? I will talk about it later. Not every single depression is the clinical depression. But of course, there's no spiritual life, no spiritual realm, no spiritual fight. So it's on, everything is clinical, everything is tablets. And of course, we know what's happening and the life is life. So, so the, this is the, Jesus' title is the Savior and the Redeemer. So let us now say, we do for, forget about this. So for many people, Jesus was just a teacher like Buddha, Silva, or other gurus now. Just a teacher. So, we have no more sense, no more sense of Jesus being a savior and no more need for Jesus to be a savior. So that's the new age, you know, the new age is based. Jesus is not a savior in new age. Jesus in new age is a teacher, a guru, a person who was full of love. He love each other all the time. Everything is love. Love each other. Love Jesus. Love this. But he's not the savior. But be, to be a savior, you need to have an enemy. You have to save from something. 
from the power of darkness, from the power of evil. He saved us on the cross. That's why he is Savior. Opening the gates of paradise. We know this theology. So that's why Jesus didn't just teach us about it, but he sacrificed his body on the cross. And that's why he is our Savior and our Redeemer. He saved us from the power of darkness. And then when we, if we follow him, we have a chance to be saved. So the new, new, uh, new Age movement, there's no, once again I'm saying, there's no real need in that system for any savior. So they talk about Jesus. So people are completely dece de deceived because they say, but they talk about Jesus. Jesus is a miracle maker. Jesus heals you. Jesus loves you. You know this story, Jesus is a sweetie boy. You know, this kind of thing. Everything is just sweetie. But it's the deception. It's not the real Christianity. It's the, de it is really, it's the deception. So, even, you know, these people who are New Age movements, some they say healers, they hold our, uh, hands and everything. They put Padre Pio statue, they put Our Lady statue. Because, and they would say even Our Father with you, and they would talk about Jesus. How many clients I had who used to go to these people and say, Father, but there was the Padre Pio there, there was the Our Lady, and the Lady prayed with me. So I thought it was okay. No, they deceived you. Because they, that's the way they are. They are not silly. They know how everything works. So once you have been completely deceived, you open your heart and then they step in and they try to heal you, touch you, whatever, give you some kinds of stuff. That's how it, that's how it works. The, because we don't talk about it, it's the big problem. Our churches are getting empty. I don't know here, but it's everywhere the same. Churches are closing down, sell, church is getting empty. Not because people don't, are not searching, people are, but they don't receive what they need. Many churches, people are not fed well. If they come and they just listen about Jesus loves you all the time, and about, uh, you know, buildings and about other stuff, a couple of good jokes, and what? People don't want it. If they want to have a good time, they will go to the theater and go watch a comedy. They don't need a priest. They want a priest who will speak the truth, who will say. So that's why churches are getting empty. We, in our diocese, we had a special meeting, the convocation for the older priest, and we had a Canadian priest who came. And he said in his diocese, I don't, I don't want to say which one, in his diocese, 2005, there was a survey and was 67,000 people going to church. Last year, 2016, uh, 17,000. 67, 17, one, seven. In 10 years time. So what's going to happen in the next five years? What's going to happen? I don't know. It's not looking well. Because uh, unless we do something. Sorry, I need to just... My dear friends, we've lost one concept. One concept is we've lost the concept of spiritual warfare. Do you have ma many young men in your churches? Many young guys, 20 years, 22, we've lost them. Most of the churches are, sorry, full with elderly people, beautiful, pious people, but elderly people. The same is in Poland. Young people do disappear as soon as they're confirmed. True? Yes. Exactly. The same is everywhere. You know why? Because we've lost this, uh, I want to call it the word, I just, sorry? 
exactly. You know, the spirit of fighting. That's exactly. You know, in the past, the real men, they were fighting. They were fighting for women. They were fighting to protect the household. They were fighting for work. They were fighting for the country. Today, first problem, I'm giving up. I don't want to. It's boring, you know. I'm bored with this. No one fights. We don't fight in the church. So that's why we've lost this spirit of fight. What is this? You know, it's uh, not just in the Catholic Church, in all the denominations. There's all big crises, a change of England. In England, you, you walk into the church, there's 15 old women sitting. <laughs> there's no one else. No one else. So it is a big crisis and a big problem because young men, they want to fight. They need to fight because it's our nature to fight for something. And they want to fight for God. They want to fight for the church. But what do we do? Come on, love each other. We cannot fight. I'm not fighting that we need to punch each other and go and blow up things. And, and it's not this kind of fight. But to stand up for, for, your tr for the truth. Stand up and speak, not to be afraid, not to live in fear all the time. You know the confirmation I mentioned before? You know why confirmation is just sacrament and people are leaving? <laughs> because, because it should be seen as a sacrament of empowering us for the battle by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you agree with that? This should be the sacrament of empowering us with a strength, empowering us for the battle by the gift. So, if we say to, to these kids, listen, you're getting these gifts as the battle, you know, weaponry, you see machine guns, the grenades, you know, bazooka, well, they, you need to be ready for the fight. You are now confirmed. But we don't do it. It should be just easy, everything stressless, you know, free, and bishop will come, and what's happened? The very next day, they're leaving the church. A few of them will stay because mom, mom is still going to church. But we don't empowering because we have no idea. We don't give them the idea that we need to fight for our faith today. If I don't fight, if I don't go forward, I'm going to go backwards. Sorry, the, the current is so strong. It's the same in Europe, America, I think. It's so strong. This, the spirit of this world is so strong. You cannot afford it just to be like this. Oh, come on. I'm just relaxed. If you don't make an effort, if you don't know really how to cross the river with a strong current, you will go. You'll be taken by the current and you will crash. That's what's happening to many young people today, so many young people leaving the faith, not going to church anymore. We are sacramentalized. We have sacraments, but nothing else. But we have no faith. We have no faith. And that's, that is the big problem. So what is that spiritual, spiritual warfare? Just a few words. To understand the battle, we need to begin with acknowledging that we are at war. So first of all, it is the war. We are not sitting in a nice rectory, lovely church, waiting for people to come. You know, money, 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 money. Everything is fine. Coffee, tea, biscuits available after the mass. It's, this time is over now. We need to really say, we are at war. And this, lots of people say, this is now the time of the war. War with what? With God, with faith. It seems to be, I, know, I don't know, I've got so many friends around the world, but it seems to be that there's the war around the world now. War with God. You're not allowed to say, you're not allowed to do, you're not, not allowed to even wear a little cross. Because the other guys, they can do everything. No one dare to say anything about this and that, their symbolic religious stuff. But if you're a Christian, you're not allowed, you know. We cannot offend anyone. It's, it's, what is that all about? What is that all about? So this is the battle. 
The battle involved combat between what? Two persons, fractions, or two armies. As Christians, we are in spiritual battle of some sort on a daily basis. So it's not just I'm talking about the spiritual warfare, but even the one you have every single day. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever you go to work, whatever is going to happen, you're fighting with your uh, body, with your mind, with your heart, with your way you think. It's the battle. And you need to know that the battle is uh, it's sometimes very severe. As Christians, we are in the spiritual battle of some sort on a daily basis. Our spiritual battles and warfare are real, even though we cannot physically see the attacker. And I cannot see you, the devil. But you have to sense it. It's, it is. He is real. He is around. But we can see ourselves the battlefields. Where's the biggest battlefield? Tell me. Where's the battlefield? Where the Satan wait? No. Well, in my body. It's here. How did you know that? <laughs> yes, it's not my heart. It's not my stomach. It's not my sexuality. It's my mind. This is the biggest battlef battlefield. In the spiritual realm, there is a battle going on regardless of our opinion. We are either victors or victims. So people who say, I don't believe in anything, they are victims. Even you think they are successful, their prosperity is there and everything, they are victims. In the end of the day, they are losers. I will explain to you later on. Jesus told us in Matthew 28, 18, that all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. The, the Matthew 28, 18 verse is not only about this, our salvation, it's also about our everyday victory. So we, if we do in authority of Jesus, if we fight in authority of Jesus, we are going to win. Because all authority, devil has no authority over God, anyone. So all authority is given to Jesus. Every day, victory is achieved by knowing, believing, and understanding the battles that we are enduring daily, regardless if we are passive or active. So we need to know and believe and understand how it is happening, what is happening around me. That's why we, so ma we have so many lapsed Catholic Christians who gave up because they are fighting their fights. But they cannot understand, and no one explained to them. Because probably the local priest cannot understand, doesn't understand himself. Because never been taught, and so <laughs> it's the vicious circuit. But how many Catholics could have been saved or just brought out of the misery? But no one does this job because, or in the worst scenario, they go to different denominations or Christian movements and they say, now I discovered Jesus. Now I discovered love. Now I discovered my church. Not really. They've been deceived, but we have to say it's my fault. We didn't do anything to save that soul. And that's why it's, it's, it's a big, big problem, my dear friends. So, if we do not believe in that, a lot of pe people don't believe, then we cannot be aware of all that is going on for or against us. So, that is very simple. I don't believe in this stuff, so I'm unaware. Doesn't mean this that not happening. I just blind it out completely and say, I cannot see that part of my life. It's not happening. I don't believe in this stuff. Whether we choose to believe in existence of spiritual beings and places does not change the fact of their existence and their activities. So my dear friends, the war is real and we are at war. John 17, remember this very famous, beautiful text? Jesus gives a clear message through his prayer to the Father. 
about the seriousness of our lives in this world. And he says, I'm not going to read the whole text because I have no time. And he says, John 17, 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but I for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And then verses 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. And then he says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So Jesus himself says, is asking his dad, keep them from the evil one. So he's acknowledging there is evil. So he's praying for you and me. He prayed for you and me. Keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. So it means for all the Christians now, for you and me. So that's how it works. So Jesus even asked personally his father, protect them. Protect them from the evil one. If there was no evil, why did he pray for it? That would be no making any that would be no making any any sense. So after reading John 17, it becomes clear that if we are in the world but not of the world, we are going to have to have conflicts. Whether you want it or you don't want it. Whether you're a lay person, you are the priest, you're the bishop, you're the cardinal, whoever you are. We have a conflict. These conflicts are spiritual warfare. The world hates those who follow Jesus. So we know this text. Jesus said, the world will hate you, but do not lose your heart. I am with you always. So he was telling them, that don't be afraid because there will be enemies. You will not are going to have an easy life. If you choose me, you need to be prepared to fight, to face the enemy. They will hate you. Remember this text? The mother and father will betray and this, and mother-in-law and father-in-law. And what is that all about? Because there, there, will, be, there will be a conflict. A conflict is always, if you really want to follow the Lord, you cannot be free from any conflicts. But the, prob the, the, the good news is that I will be with you always and you'll be witnesses to the end of the world. You'll be the witnesses of Jesus. The battles of spiritual warfare are intense when the person decides to accept Jesus. This is very important. You know, I've seen many times in my life that someone was having a very good life away from God. And all of a sudden, you know, and prosperity, everything was fine. But all of a sudden something happened and the person decided to come back to God or just, just discover God and faith. Everything started going back. It was horrible fighting. It was you no know, family, the losing jobs, financially, health-wise. And I've got a person once who wanted to be, become a Catholic, and I was preparing him for, for, for baptism. And I explained to him, listen, are you ready? Because I knew, because his life was quite a rough one, and I knew that it would be a massive attack. Oh, yes, Father, I'm ready. I will be baptized, you know, one of these. Goodness me, the devil hit him so much. Do you know that he resigned a week before? He said, I don't want to be Catholic because, you know, I, my life is just completely ruined. If God existed, if your Jesus was real, <laughs> it wouldn't happen to me. You know this prosperity gospel? I'm believing in Jesus, so everything is coming to me. But it's not about this. So he wasn't prepared 
to fight. If you make the decision to change your life, that's when the devil attacks you. I will talk about tactics tomorrow, but it's important to understand. If a teenager is, is doing silly things, away from God now, you know, your daughter, your granddaughter, or son, son, the devil is happy. It's not happening anything. But as soon as he, oh my God, I've done the wrong thing. I need to go back to my faith or back to my normal life. Then the devil will attack. I've seen it. So when you, when you make a decision for God or important so for any change, very, very often uh, the devil attacks. And it's so important to have someone with that person. A, a, a guide or a, a friend. Or no, I'm not just talking about the priest who will guide you through this. Because otherwise it's so easy to say, sorry, I, I, it's not something what I really want in my life. We cannot forget that the angels are, today especially the angel, are angels. So the angels are to help us. We are not alone in this battle. We are not hopeless. We cannot do anything. The angels are given to us for help. And I've seen it. I've saw how angels really fight. Fight for, for, for people. And it's absolutely amazing to, to, to witness this. So this is just a couple of uh, words about the spiritual warfare. Because a lot of people are completely unaware. If, I, I'm, I, I know from my life, as soon as I've got the message, my life as a priest has changed completely. From the night, priest who was just, you know, from meeting to meeting, with the hands like this, saying the masses, business as usual. <laughs> Everything was fine. When I just realized that I was walking the wrong path, and I tried to change, started straight away. No, don't do it. Come on, remember, you, mean, you will have a problem with this. You, you better don't go that way. And I received a lot of, a lot of hits in my life. And lot, not just me, lots of other priests, lots of other people, lay people who have decided to, to fight. To the, the people who discovered a new Christianity, the, the new way, the new taste, the real taste what Jesus said, what is all about being a follower of him. And, uh, and I hope that you, you are following that way. But maybe probably lots of people from your, you know, whatever you live, whatever you are, they are not, or even your, your parishes. Should I finish now or should I? Are you tired? No. Not yet. Is that helpful, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is the easy stuff, believe me. This is the introduction. But the real <laughs> stuff will come to help you. So as the Bible and the Catholic Church teaches us, we are involved in the spiritual, spiritual warfare. And we need to be fully aware of it. And a very important rule for the spiritual warfare is that we should not be thinking and talking too much about the devil. I know we are here, and I'm just going to explain to you how you know, it looks like. What, so I need to talk about, about the enemy. But don't take me wrong that I'm fascinated with the devil. Some people said to me, oh, Father Peter, he always can see the devil every, behind every single tree. <laughs> it's not true. So. This is a very specific time for us to, to open your eyes and um, those who are going to watch this. But, but it's very important that we cannot be fascinated with evil because it's the very vast entry point, entry point for the devil to come in. People will start you know, reading the book and being fascinated to know more about darkness, how it works, start watching horror films, movie films, exorcists, you know, all this stuff. And believe me, lots of those people got, got into a massive problem, spiritual. So fascination with evil is deadly. So I'm, I want to be clear, 
I'm talking about it because I want to open your eyes. But I don't, I'm not fascinated with this because we need to know, we need to know the enemy. We should learn to recognize their activity and presence and counter it, but having our eyes fixed on God. Always. Always. When I was doing exorcisms, he talked to me. The devil was yelling at me, calling me names, talk, telling me my past. Everything was, you know, some things were true. Sometimes he tried to deceive me that in the battle, that was the battlefield when I was exercising people. But I always had a cross in my hand. And I was, when, when, when I was lost myself, because he's, you no, know, I was dealing with an angel being, not with this person, with a spirit, a million times more intelligent than I was. So I was holding the cross and just said, Jesus, help, Jesus, Jesus, help. It's so easy to really be redirected and, and, and all of a sudden just to lose the sight from Jesus and to go uh, to the darkness. That's what the devil would like to. Look at me. Don't look at God. Look at me. I am God. But this, of course, we know is the lie. So we are baptized and confirmed Christians. In both of these sac sacraments, we have renounce Satan, all his works, and empty promises of the kingdom of darkness. In his baptism promises, we profess our faith in Jesus Christ and in the church. So this is very important. You know, when I do baptize children, and I ask people, do you reject Satan? Yes. Yes. No. They don't even know what I am saying. And all his empty premises, yes. I said, come on, wake up. Do you, are you aware what I'm asking? You know, that's, that's not renunciation. The devil is laughing at this. You know, he's laughing. It's, uh, so, so we don't do it. We really need to say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Nothing to do with him. But people are now completely unaware of it. I know some priest, uh, I think it's in Ireland. I'm not sure that there's not even now a priest is asking these questions anymore. Not to offend people. Yes, yes. I know one priest who, uh, you know, these booklets for baptism, he completely <laughs> uh, redone them and just removed that prayer of, of exorcism because they were upsetting people, talking about the devil or Satan, you know. This is absolutely absurd. No, you just, you just gone too far. And as this child will suffer for the rest of his life. So the best way of dealing with the devil is to fall in love with God. This is the, the, the most best way of dealing with the devil is to fall in love with God. You need to have a knowledge. You have to know the enemy. You have to know his tactics. You have to know the devil believe that he exists, but don't believe in him. <laughs> Fall in love with God. He will protect you, but you need to protect yourself. The gifts we need to pray now for is not give you of healing. It's a knowledge, prudence. That's a very important gift. We need to pray for and discernment. Who prays for the gift of discernment? Goodness me. I've seen people who's just doing uh, horrible things. And, and, and they say, listen, are you, why are you going? Why are you going to that person? Because uh, she has a healing hands and she's like, uh, stop. It's nothing to do with God or the Holy Spirit. Don't go with it. No, no, no. She has the cross here. She's good. Discernment. You know, so knowledge, prudence, and discernment. Those three important gifts, charismatic gifts, we need to pray for right now. Otherwise, we crash. You can't follow every single light, every single idea, you know. You know, this, what is the worst now in the church? It's confusion. We are all confused what's happening. Confusion. So, it's a spirit of confusion. Confusion is division. <laughs> And so forth. 
So that's why the knowledge is important and all these three gifts, discernment and prudence. But always keep your eyes on the cross. The devil will not deceive you unless you start following people of their ideas. And don't, please, don't do it. This lesson of understanding the battle will give us a foundation on where, how, and what the battles look like in our lives. We all have our battlefields. Do you agree with me? Believe me. We were fighting with my throat for two days. Almost, you know, losing my patience. But anyway, we all have our more serious battlefields like, the, like my throat. And uh, what's happening? There are three main areas of where the battles are fought. It's the spiritual battle, the worldly battle, and the battle within us. Which one is the worst? Within us. Exactly. <coughs> the, devil, <coughs> the devil and demons... The devil and demons are not only attack individuals like you and me. Nowadays, they attack marriages, whole families, parishes, institutions, corporations, computer games industry, music industry, pornographic industry. Do you know there are five million pornographic websites? Do you know that 30% of Google search are pornography in the world? 30%? you know how people are enslaved by the devil? So it's not just I'm talking about individuals being possessed. All groups of people are possessed. It's not just individuals or groups of people, industries. So really, uh, where we are as Christians, Sometimes I <laughs> will the picture like me with a stick, you know, against the, a big tank, you know, going. <laughs> no, we have God with us, but how many of us do fight? How many of us are ready, prepared, trained? I'm not talking, just talking about priests. You, lay people, how many of you in your parishes, this topic is, is, no, is on the agenda? <laughs> Not just AA and this and that and that. And it's just like a social work, you know, place of, of, for people just come and have a good time together. But we are not well trained for, for the battle. And the same is in the seminaries. I was, I was uh, leading a conference for the priests, and I said to them, and the most of them were pastors, and I said, Fathers, do you know that you are your uh, properties are attacked by commons. Are you aware that your rectory is bombarded by so many spells? What? What are you talking about? My rectory is lovely. I know. When was the last time you exercised the rectory? When was the last time you exercised the property? Pr you protected it. You think the demons has no access? Oh yes, they do. And the priests were just like, where did you come from? You know, which planet? You know? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is, some priest said to me, I got the blessed sacrament, we are saved. Really? Really, we are saved? You know, the witchcraft, they are well trained. They know what they're doing. They bring stuff into the churches. Cursed stuff. The friend of mine, the priest, the people came and they said, Oh, we came farther from the pilgrimage. We brought the statue of Jesus, Sacred Heart. So everyone would be happy. But he didn't like it. Something was not good with the statue. So he opened the window and it was like a third store building and smashed against the concrete. And his statue didn't smash. It was hard like steel. It shouldn't be. It was cursed. And then when he said the prayer over the statue, the statue just disintegrated in seconds. 
because just to have a control over the priest. We don't understand how it looks like. It was a seminary when the, there was less and less and less students, seminarians. And all of a sudden, someone had a gift of discernment and say, I don't like a cook in the seminary kitchen. And she was from the Sunday, like uh, Ameri uh, South America, and she was the voodoo, and she was putting the stuff, wood stuff, into the food. Everyone was eating this, this food. So there were less and less seminarians. They were leaving and leaving and leaving because she was putting this voodoo, whatever, food, into the food, seminarians' food. So they know what to do. And we playing games that, oh, everything is fine. I don't have time to give you more examples, but just, just open our eyes. It's just really a, a battle. But we pretend that everything is fine. So what is the kingdom, kingdom of Satan like? It's like, it's the lie. His kingdom is the big lie. Look now. <laughs> All this, the kingdoms of our kids, our youth, is the real life they create? Electronic gadget is the real life? Everything is a lie, it's illusion. He's the master of lie. That's what happens. So, so his kingdom is the lie and seeks to resemble the kingdom of God. Satan is determined to be like God. So it's like the exact copy. He's creating the copy of the kingdom of God. So if you do have no knowledge, and those three gifts I told you, you, sometimes you know, which one is the real? This one or this one? Where should they go? That's why it's so important to know, because he really makes a very good copy of, the co of, of what God does. And if, if you don't know the difference you make really make a bad choice. Satan's kingdom is the false kingdom. Is the false kingdoms. He offers us false happiness and peace. Look at your kids. Look at the teenagers now. If you ask him or her about the happiness, what will be happiness? Have lots of dollars, lots of you know, big houses, big cars, good happy life, lots of sex, lots of drugs, lots of alcohol. That's the whole life they have. And it's not just here, it's everyone the same model, because it's one world now. <laughs> the same stuff is here, the same stuff is in Europe, the same stuff in Asia, the same stuff in Australia, everywhere the same. They are brainwashed. And um, so it's all this false happiness. All ha false happiness. So, it's another thing I need to just... Uh, go through to another page because otherwise we have not much time. And Satan is using curiosity. You know, I'm curious. Curiosity is another entry point. Curiosity. What is next? What is on that web page? What is, on that? What is happening? You know, like Adam and Eve <laughs> in paradise. Get the, the apple. You know, you will be, you will be like God. You have the knowledge like God. It's the same trick over and over and over again. The curiosity, have a knowledge like God, to be like God, to have a power, to be immortal, you know? That's what we need. We all want to be powerful, be immortal, and to live forever with power. But that curiosity is another entry point, just, just for your information. It's a very false and uh, very, very, very powerful entry point. So curiosity and this false protection. I am protected. I'm fine. Nothing is going to happen to me. You know, the devil is convincing me. You are okay. You don't need God. You don't need any institution. You don't need church. It's boring. You don't need any religion. You don't need confession. Or if you want to go to church, go, but forget about confession. You're fine. Have a little cake, do a cookies from the priest, and you'll be fine. We're all going to heaven. We are all going to be safe. 
doesn't matter what you do, God is full of mercy. And I don't want to make a comment, but lots of people say that I had so many last year, so many homeless like this, the year of mercy, you know. It was not about go, convert, change your life, go to confession, make some change in your life. God is full of mercy. No. We are blessing your sins. We are happy. God is full of mercy. Don't worry about anything else. God is good. And so people didn't change any lives. People were just put into sleep and they still are in sleep. So it was so difficult, so difficult to, to watch. The devil can imitate everything except two things. Which one? Humility and obedience. Because he, he wasn't humble and he wasn't obedient. He can imitate everything he wants. How many times he came to different saints as Jesus, as Mary, with false healings, or the false Holy Spirit. You know, when we were watching this, there was a man once, remember, and he, he was into healing. I want to be in a healing ministry. I want to get the healing gifts of healing. So he didn't know what to do. Very good man. You know what? He went to Lourdes. Because there's, Lourdes is about healing. So he went to Lourdes and he was so happy. So he was asking Our Lady, I want to be a healing ministry. And he received the gift. And he came back and he was praying over people. And people were getting healed and everything for a while. And then it was getting worse and worse and worse. What happened? That gift was given to him by, by Satan. Not by Our Lady. In Lourdes. Because why? His pride. I want to be. I want this. I want to be someone. I want to have a power. That is all about power. So he received the gift. But not, you know how cheeky the devil was? It was in Lourdes. So make sure that he believed it was from God. And this man made lots of bad things. And then he ended up in a bad way as well. But it was a gift, not from heaven, but from, from uh, hell. And just before I finish, because it's half past seven, remember one thing. Nothing is free from the devil. If you ask for help, if you make a pact with him, lots of people do, even at teenagers, you know, just for the good exams. How many times teenagers said to me, Father, no, I asked God, nothing happened. I asked the devil, it happened straight away. Yes, because he's very quick. He's very fast. He will give you. And then all of a sudden, this is the pact. Nothing is for free. Like using the credit card. <laughs> You can have a good life for a month, but then the bank will start sending you the bill. The same is with him. You can have a couple of days of years of good fun, prosperity, or fame, music bands, you know. More and more comes afterwards, you know, they make pact. For, but then you have to start paying the bill. <laughs> and so always remember that God gives us out of love because he loves you. But Satan is not giving you because he loves you. He doesn't love anyone. He hates us. He hates us. You see, love versus hate. That's the copy. He operates in the hate realm, not love realm. So he hates us. So you must pay everything back. So especially young people, there's the McDonald's society, fast food society, quick, you know, cheap, lots, tasty. The same in my life. I cannot do it slowly. I cannot, you know, get things done through my life. I need to do it right now. So they are even ready to make a pact with the devil. Sometimes completely unaware of the situation. And I, I used to deal with people 
who made a pact with the devil 30, 40 years when they were teenagers. They were 50s and 60s, and their life was a mess. And then we had to break the contract. I had to go down right to the bottom, break the contract. And the devil was furious. You know, it doesn't disappear with time. <laughs> if you're 80 and you've been doing something silly when you're 17, all your life, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. So, I don't know if you're, if you're interested in what I'm saying. Is it all right? I don't want to put too much tonight because it's the first night. Okay. I haven't finished, but I will continue tomorrow. Lots of things to say, but just I give you an idea, give you a picture. This is something completely neglected. And I, I was completely blind. I was so stupid. I didn't believe. I mean, I didn't believe. I did believe, but it wasn't very important to me at all. But when I started working with people, learning through experience, reading more and more, I met so many beautiful pr people on, in the world, in this ministry. I, I learned from them. And my eyes were just like getting bigger and bigger and saying, my God, oh my God, this is all real. So now when I, when I read in the newspapers, or someone's saying all this, oh, it's just blah, 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 you know fairy stories, I just I say, God, let these people speak. Let our bishops speak, our priests speak, you know, openly, without fear. Start saving people because they are going to hell. You know, St. Hyacinta from Fatima, she said, how many people, souls go every day to hell? Either we believe in this or not. But that's true. So we need to say, stop the spirit of fear. I will speak about fear again later on. But fear is the one that paralyzes me. And fear is the one that kills faith. So maybe during this retreat, we say, stop to fear. Stand in truth. And only truth will make you free. I am a free man. You can cut me in pieces. And I don't care. I'm a free man. And I'm speaking to you three the truth. And you share the truth with other people. <sighs> Glory be to the Father and to the Son. Good night. <laughs>